بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on in our brief overview of the book شر السنة شر أصول السنة إمام أحمد so a concise explanation of the treaties أصول uh, السنة and Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, as we had went over the last time, when, when we began the metan, he said, Asul sunnah indana. Tamasik bima kana alayhi ashaba Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa iktida bihim wa tarak al-bida wa kullu bidatin fihi al-dalala wa tarak al-khusumat wa julus ma ashaba al-ahwa wa tarak al-mira wa al-jidal wa khusumat fi al-deen. So Imam Ahmed Rahimahullah Ta'ala said, Asul is Sunnah Indana. And again, we, we talked about Asul and the meaning of Asul in Arabic. And that the Asul is Sunnah here refers to the foundation of the religion of Islam or the foundation of the Sunnah of the Prophet. Wasallam. And Imam Ahmed said, he began by saying, Tamasik bima kana alayhi ashab Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, the Asul of Sunnah is adhering to what the uh, Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'een, what they were upon in their aqidah, what they were upon in their fiqh, what they were upon in their methodology and given da'wah ilallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we mentioned the ahadith, if tarakatil yahud ala ita wa sabayin firqa ila akhira hadith, the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where the Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said that the Jews would break into 71 sects, and then his ummah would break into 73 sects, all of them in the fire, except one, and then he said basically that they are those who follow, follow sul, sunnah, meaning the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and those who follow the sunnah of his companions. And then in another hadith, the Prophet sallallahu said, "Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnata khulafa rashidin al mahdiin." The Prophet sallallahu said that it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided uh, predecessors, meaning uh, the rightly guided khalifat, meaning Abu Bakr wa Umar wa Uthman wa Ali. So their sunnah as well is a hujja for us, is something that we must follow in order to have success and be away from the groups that are have innovated in the religion. And Imam Ahmed Rahimullah Ta'ala he said Wa meaning to follow and adhere strictly to what they are upon. And we also mentioned about the importance of the Isnad, and that the Isnad is the deen. The Isnad meaning the chain chain of narrators, that that is how the religion was passed on. And if you look at a lot of the books in Aqidah, the books in Tafsir, those early books, you'll find that even the books in Tafsir are like, Qala Hadathana Fulan, Hadathana Fulan, Hadathana Fulan, giving you the chain of narrators all the way up to the explanation of the ayat. Because that's how they held on to the religion. And... As Imam Mubarak said, Al Isnad Minadin, Walola Isnad Lakal Mensha Masha. That Imam Abdullah ibn Mubarak Rahimullah Ta'ala he said that the Isnad is the religion. And he said, if there wasn't the Isnad, then people then a person would say whatever he wanted, you know, in relation to the religion. So the Isnad was the way they could check and tell if the Khabar, of course, that that which was being narrated whether it was sound or not. So that's the importance of the Isnad in the religion. And then the Imam, he said, the next uh, statement, he said, وَتَرْقَ bida And leaving innovation, religious innovation. And Aisha, رضي الله تعالى عنها, قالت, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولُ أو قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من أحدث في أمرنا هذا ما ليس منه فهو رد وفي رواية لمسلم من عمل عملا ليس عليه أمرنا فهو رد. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said in a very famous hadith, the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها, 
about bid'ah, about innovation, where she's where the Prophet ﷺ said, "Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it, it then it, it is rejected." And then in another narration, "Whoever uh, does an, a a new action in this affair of ours will have it re- rejected." So meaning, and, and Sheikh Abdul Masan al Abad Rahim uh, Allah Taala, he mentioned in the differences of this hadith, he mentioned that one of the hadiths is is in re- reference to the person who uh, does a bid'ah, who does bid'ah, who does something that is not from the Sharia of Islam, that is not uh, legislated from the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ as far as an action of ibadah. And the other one is in relation to a person who begins a bid'ah. Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. That both of them are rejected. So. A per, the, you know, there can be a situation where a person begins a bid'ah and then something where a person just practices a bid'ah, something that they learn from their fathers, their imam, their sheikh, or whatever, which is not from the religion of Islam, which is not, it has no, uh, no foundation in the Quran or the Sunnah, or perhaps the bid'ah can also, it can be something that does have a root in the is in the Sharia, but yet it's done in a way which is not mishroor. Meaning, for example, if someone says, "Okay, you know, salat is from the religion. All of us have ittifaq. You know, the the imams have ittifaq that salat is an obligation from the religion. But if the person does the salat in a way which is not in accordance with how the Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam did prayed salat, then that's an innovation. Although the salat has an origin in the religion. However, the way that they did the salat has no origin in the religion. For example, if they increase rakah, he says, you know, I want more ajr. I think I'll pray three rakat uh, for salat al-fajr. Uh, I'll pray three instead of two because I'm increasing. I'm increasing khair. But we say, no, you're not increasing khair. You're increasing shar. And your salat will be batal. It will be rejected. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, "Men fi amrina hadha malaysa minhu furad." Whoever innovates in this affair of ours will have it rejected. And you have now innovated in Islam. You have increased ibadah in a way that was not uh, done by the Prophet ﷺ, nor the Sahaba, radiyallahu taalaanu majmaeen, nor the Tabi'een and those who followed them, bi ihsan ila yom al-din. So. So also, it can also be, uh, for example, it can be relation in relation to time. Or, for example, if someone says, now, I want to make hajj now. I want to make hajj to, not tonight. I have a ticket to Saudi Arabia. I'm going to make hajj tonight. We'd say, no, you cannot. Hajj is from the religion, nam. But hajj is ibadah makhsusa bil waqt. It is tied to a time. A specific time. These are not the months of Hajj, so you cannot make Hajj now. And then if he says no, okay, fine, I won't make it now. I'll make it during the time of Hajj, but I want to make it in Pakistan. I want to make it in Pakistan because Jamaat Tablik they go for 40 days in Pakistan, and they, they, you know, our our Sheikh says that you know we should go to Pakistan. So I want to make my Hajj in Pakistan instead of going to Mecca because I don't really like the Arabs anyway, or whatever the reason they say. And may Allah guide us and guide the people. I mean, so that would also be a bid'ah. Why? Because why would it be a bid'ah if he says he goes to Pakistan for Hajj? He's going in the time of Hajj. No, but the reason why it would be a bid'ah because it's 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 for us to go to attend Mecca, to go no. to to go to Hajj and to make Torah upon the Kaaba and follow the the Sunnah of no. the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sorry, as understood. By the companions, which they followed the also the tradition of Ibrahim, no. and that was yes, and that was going to Mecca and, and making no. tarawih around the Kaaba and, no. and doing the, the the traditions of no, Jazakallah khairan, no. nam exactly. No. So yeah, it w- it would not be because it would not be the place. No. So bid'ah sometimes it can be a bid'ah just by changing the place or the time with regards to ibadah, no. and that's why we're ordered to follow the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and. Something else, uh, very important, the ulama, they speak a lot about the sunnah. What does it mean, sunnah? What are we talking about here? Shaykh Ubaidah Jabri, hafadhullah ta'ala, he mentions something very important here. He says, wa marad bi usul sunnah So here he's talking about what is meant by usul sunnah because the name of this book is Usul sunnah Imam Ahmed. So what is meant here 
by Usul al Sunnah. He said, Here, ma yajibu itimad alayhi min al kawaid fil ibada fil ibada uh fil ibadati wal aqidati wa muamalati. So he said what is meant by Usul al Sunnah here is those things which it's an obligation to uh to follow in practice from the uh, from the pr- principles regarding worship, regarding your akida, your creed, regarding muamalat, in, in regarding the issues of fiqh on how we marry, on how our social relations and buying and selling, all of those things. So he's saying that that is what is meant by usul sunnah. And then he said, wa hadi usul wa kawaid mus mus uh, mustamid mustamid mustamida min min nas women seated to sell of a salih within shit for for cool mustamida mineral kitabi was sunna ala faham a self a salih or marad be sell of a salih whom kulu men mother bad or suli lai salalai was salam in as hobby he why i am to tabi in women women body him what kill i am it's a arba wa ozai wahum wahum wahamadain وصف وسفيانين ورازيين وأبي حاتم وأبي زرعة وأبي عبيد القاسم بن سلام والشعبة بن حجاج والليث بن سعد والمعافي بن عمران وغيرهم. So Sheikh Abid حفظ الله تعالى he mentioned that what is meant by أصول السنة and where this أصول comes from. Where does it come from? He says it comes from. Uh, the uh, biographies of the Salaf of this Ummah and from the text, from the text meaning the Quran and the Sunnah. And if you like to say in, a, in another statement he said, or another, uh, another way of, of putting it, is that it comes from the Quran and the Sunnah with the understanding of the Salaf of Salih, meaning the pious predecessors. And then he says, what's meant by the Salaf as Salih, what, what is meant by when we say Salaf as Salih, he, it, it means those who came before, who came before us, who came after the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from his companions and the Imams from the Tabi'een, meaning those who, who met companions and those, and, and died on Islam and, uh, and, and so forth. And those who came after them, from the four Imams, like Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam uh, Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed, and this is a book of Imam Ahmed, and then other Imams like Imam Ozai, Wa Hamadain, Wa Sufyanain, you know, the two uh, Imams, uh, Hamad and Imam Sufyan, Sufyan Athori, wa, and the other Sufyan. Wa uh, Raziyain, wa Imam Abi Hatim, wa Imam Abi Zura, wa Imam Ubaid al Qasim al Salam, wa Shu'ba ibn Hujjaj, wa Layth ibn Sa'd, and the other Imams of the Sunnah who are known for adhering to Kitabi Law wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and spreading the Sunnah, the Message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and preserving it and teaching it to the people. Then he said, That where the uh, Imam Ahmed said, "Wakolhu to Mesik bima kana alayhi ashab Rasulillahi sallallahu alaihi wasallam him." So the statement where Imam Ahmed said uh, that the Asul Sunnah to us is adhering to uh, what the Sahaba of the the, the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were upon and adhering to it. And Sheikh Obaid mentions, he said. That Imam Ahmed mentioned specifically the or the companions of the Prophet ﷺ for various reasons. One of the reasons is that the companions of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them to be his companions, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them to uh, to carry and to carry the Sharia. To preserve the Sharia and carry the Sharia to the Ummah, to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they understood the Sharia 
and they understood the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they were there when the the revelation was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and uh, and it came down. So they were the best of this ummah, and that is one of the reasons why uh, Imam Ahmed mentioned the companions. Another re- reason he said. The Sheikh mentioned, he said, the second reason, he said, and as it is uh, something that is well known to Ahl Sunnah, that all the companions of the, uh, of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Radiallahu Ta'ala were Thaqat Adul, meaning that all the companions, Radiallahu Ta'ala they were uh, trustworthy in their narrations, they were just and trustworthy. And their narrations were sound, so there was they were free from hypocrisy, and and so forth, and so that they were uh, trustworthy. And this is another reason why Imam Ahmed mentioned the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu taalaanu majmaeen. So then the Shaykh mentioned Hafidhullah Ta'ala regarding the Sahaba uh, that anything that the Sahaba عنهم, when they had consensus on something that it's an obligation for us to follow that consensus. And it's not permissible to go against that. And if someone is a, uh, has knowledge and they do it intentionally that they go against the consensus of the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين, فإنه ضال مضل مبتدع صاحب هوا. So he said that the person who goes against the consensus of the Sahaba, رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين, intentionally, meaning that they have knowledge of it, then this person is misguided, and they misguide others, and they are an innovator. And they are a person of desires. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ And that is a dangerous uh, position to be in, of course. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ يَشَاقَكَ رَسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُ هُدَى وَيَأْتَبَى غَيْرَ سَبِيلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ نَوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى وَنُسْلِيهِ جَهَنَّمْ وَسَاءَتْ مُصِيرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فِي كِتَابِ الْكَرِيمِ That whoever differs with the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, after it has become clear to them the guidance, and they follow a path other than the path of the believers, then they will be with those whom they love, and they will have a, uh, they will be burned in Jahannam, and what an evil uh, destination that is. And Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said about this ayat, he said that this ayat is evidence that the ijma, the consensus of the believers, is a hujjah. That is dalil. That is one of the dalil of the religion. And whoever whoever goes against the hujjah or the who goes against the consensus of the believers, then it necessitates that they have went against. Uh, the, they've differed with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam and that is uh, and the thing regarding them having consensus of course it should be not in contradiction of course to the nusus to the nusus meaning the Quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam And, and, and so forth. So this lets us know the importance of the consensus of the believers and the consensus of the Sahaba, but the consensus even after them, even uh, now in our time, you know, whenever the ulama have ijma on something, they have ijma about a fiqh issue or something in aqidah or whatever, then it's not permissible for us to go against that because there's consensus. That means no one is differing in that matter from the imams of the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And, and, and a point I want to mention here is when it comes to dalil, when we talk about evidence uh, evidence in Islam, we're referring to four things. Evidence is, is from the Qur'an, 
That is Dalil. The Sunnah is Dalil. The uh, co- uh, consensus, Ijma, is Dalil. If, if there's consensus on something. And also, Qiyas. Uh, qiyas Sahih. When, when they make when you, an, when an, say, an analogy, you, this say, is also the deal. Sorry, when you say excuse, when you say consensus, consensus, you mean the majority of the Muslims what they follow. Consensus actually means that no one differed. So a lot of times you have imams. They say in a certain time, like you have a, a lot of c- certain imams. Imam Noah, for example, will say on a particular issue, he'll say what had a be ijma. You know, he'll say an issue, for example, that uh, maybe that salat. Is is wajib? He'll say, "Well, have to be ijmal ulama." He said that is by consensus of ulama, meaning that no no alam differed in his time regarding this is this issue. And the the the, the imams they even uh, they have kalam about what is ijma or you know you know and, and if what what if one alam differs and so forth and and so forth. So th- this is something we're not going to get into, but. But just in general, that is what is considered evidence. So if you have uh, the consensus of the ulama, then this is also considered dalil. This is also dalil. Quran, sunnah, ijma, and uh, uh, qiyas, sahih, meaning uh, a sound uh, analogy with regards to the Quranic text or the 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 nusus. Of the Sunnah, the text of the Sunnah, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, for example, Ijma, Ijma means, means consensus. No. no. So, and and we'll actually talk about a little more about Qiyas when we get to that part of the book, because uh, that that is coming up actually. So that'll be the place to speak about it. But for now, at least we know that uh, Dalil is for for maratib. You could say. No. What are those four maratib again? Quran, uh-huh. the Sunnah, uh-huh. uh, Ijma, Ijma, no. and uh, um, in English we say analogy. Analogy. And, and, uh-huh. and in Arabic they say Qiyas. 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 And it has to be Qiyas Sahih, meaning that it cannot contradict the Nas. No. So someone can't say, well, this is like this situation. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example. I can't think off my off the top of my head. Qiyas Sahih, uh, an example. But I'll give you an example of Qiyas Fasid. For example, or in the issue of uh, if, uh, for example, uh, the the Prophet Sallallahu said, إِذَا وَلَغَ الْقَلْبُ فِي الْإِنَاءِ أَحْدَكُمْ فَيَغْزَلُوا سَبْعًا وَأَفْرَهُ ثَمَانًا بِالْتُرَابِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, if, if a dog licks your water container, then you should wash it seven times and the eighth time with Torab. Or Ulluhunna bit Torab. Or Kemakala Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with dirt. No. So some people make Qiyas off this, and this is not Qiyas Sahih, it's not the, the correct Qiyas, is that they'll say, well, because a, a dog, his tongue is nudges, then also. Similar to that, a pig is also najis too. And, and we already know the tahrim of the pig and he has major najasa. So if a pig licks your uh, your bull, then you should also wash it seven times and the first time with tarab. They make qiyas on that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best if that's sound qiyas or not. But I, I read from Imam Ali Basam, he said that it's not sound qiyas. But the, the point being is that is a type of qiyas is by taking two two things that may be different and making a similarity to them. Like examples. Yeah, two examples and then making an analogy between them, trying to make a similarities and, and making a ruling based upon that. So that is called Qiyas. And, and we'll talk about that more in depth, about Qiyas, uh, Fasid and Qiyas, Sahih. And then, Qala Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Another issue regarding the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum is that also, of course, it's not permissible to uh, speak ill of the Sahaba, Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam radiallahu ta'ala anhum. So if someone makes ta'an, makes ta'an uh, uh, on the suhbat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, 
then this is also a sign that they are a person of misguidance, of course. And the ulama speak very uh, in depth about this issue because there are some people they, in order to undermine Islam, they try to speak. They make ta'an of Abi Huraira radiAllahu taala anhu. They they speak about him. Yeah. Why? Because he had the most narrations. He was the 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 uh, the most narrations of hadith. He narrated the most a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu So if you undermine Abu Huraira, then you've undermined Islam, the authenticity of Islam. No. So then that that is a way. Usually, it's usually non-Muslims, uh, especially Orientalists, who make this kind of uh, who speak about Abu Huraira radiAllahu taala anhu majmaeen. And the Prophet sallallahu said, "La tusubu ashabi." So the Prophet ﷺ said, do not uh, curse my companions. Do not speak about my companions. In another narration, the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا ذُكِرَ أَسْحَابِي فَأَمْسَطْ أَوْ أَسْقُطْ وَكَمَا قَالَ النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ If my companions are mentioned, then keep silent. So this lets us know that even the fitna that, that came about between the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, رضي الله تعالى عنه مجمعين, that although none of... Uh, not all, they were not all correct in when they disputed and they, they fought, but they all were rewarded. No. And it is not for us to speak about them and speak and say some were this or some were that or uh, uh, speak ill of the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, but instead we leave it. And this has become a qa'ida, a rule of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And that is one of the reasons why Imam Ahmed also. He mentioned and that we adhere to what the companions of the Prophet ﷺ were upon. And that's what he said, you know. And, and we adhere to what they're upon. And he'll speak more in depth in the treaties uh, about that. And, and then he said, bid'ah, And also living innovation. That we stay away from innovation. And we stay away from the people of innovation. As it came in a nas. And all bid'ah is misguidance. And so those are... Uh, some of the things because misguided uh, bid'ah of course leads you to the hellfire and bid'ah is uh, undermining the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is if to say as Imam I believe it's a statement of Imam Malik and he said uh, that whoever basically who what means whoever innovates then it then is if they za'ma and the Muhammad Khan risala that they that whoever innovates in the religion of Islam, it's as if they are saying that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has cheated the people with the message. Like it wasn't sufficient what he came with. It wasn't sufficient that he he didn't because my sheikh and my imam has a new way, has yeah, a new tariqah. We can yeah. supplicate to the dead. Why can't Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't supplicate to the dead or the, his ancestors? But we can now, and we can supplicate to him. Or we can celebrate his birthday. But the Prophet ﷺ didn't celebrate his birthday. The companions didn't celebrate his birthday. The Tabi'een, with the Tabi'een, they didn't celebrate the Prophet ﷺ's birthday. So when you say, when you begin to do an action like this, it's as if you're saying what they, they came with wasn't enough. No. And as if you're saying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, didn't complete the deen when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum. This day I perfected my religion for you, and I have completed my favor upon you, and I have chosen Islam as uh, Islam as a, the religion for you. Allah said that. So then, when someone comes up with something new, it is as if they are saying that that Allah didn't perfect the religion. So those are some of the things uh, related to the uh, related uh, 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 in regards to the to the Sahaba radiAllahu taala anhum and there's many ayats uh, in the Quran as Allah subhanahu wa taala says لا يستوي منكم من أنفق من 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 قبل الفتح وقاتل أولئك أعظم درجات من من الذين أنفقوا من بعد وقاتلوا وكلوا وعد الله الحسن. الله سبحانه وتعالى says في كتاب الكريم that they are not the same those who spent before the fat and the fat is referring to fat al Mecca before Mecca was open. 
So before the, the, the opening of Mecca. So they're not the same. And this is even amongst the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that some had higher status than others. Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een. 